professional career in Chicago and just moved back for this role and so um, I'm learning a lot more about all the wonderful work happening in early childhood here. Um, I want to start uh, by first thanking the team that helped put this together. Um, I particularly Ola, Sarah, Julie, um, and, and of course Aaron, but um, and then the, the entire teams that wrapped around them. So uh, none of us would be here if it weren't for them. So if we can just give them a round of applause. For this. Uh, there is very. Uh, I, I get to stand up here and thank people and, and welcome you, but it is all of their hard work that really made all of this happen. So thank you all for, for putting that together. Um, I am thrilled to be here. I'm also thrilled to, to have walked into a situation in Massachusetts where um, there is so much wonderful foundation built to, to really think about early childhood innovation. I've worked with some of you for um, in various capacities over the years, and um, I, I believe wholeheartedly in the value of early childhood. I also think that we always, we know so much and we haven't always been able to translate what we know into what we do every day. And so the opportunity we have across the board um, with, with early childhood in Massachusetts is really tremendous. And before I get into specifically what the opportunity is with the Early Childhood Support Organization Initiative and why you're here today to hear a little bit more about our vision, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about the context that that fits into. Uh, Massachusetts has really, um, I, I can take no credit for this because as I said, I'm on week eight and so this is all the wonderful work that happened before I got here. But Massachusetts has really done the hard work of trying to transition um, the traditional supports for early childhood into using the research about what we know about the context in which early childhood um, professional development happens and what we know about adult learners um, and, and how people need to really change what they do in the classroom takes far more more than just a training or, um, or a, a pamphlet. Um, and then re really thinking about the capacity of leaders in our programs uh, has been not only thinking about what coaching looks like, but how we set um, a quality scale QRAS that is reflective of the leadership's capacity to drive professional, co professional development within their own program. That job embedded professional development in which a, a professional gets to step back and and reflect on their day-to-day -day practice um, and, and improve uh, with a coach in their real life, real, real time um, uh, experiences. Um, so thinking about that embedded in our QRIS, thinking about that embedded in how we have uh, redeveloped professional development capacity across the state, um, thinking about the, the professional development networks that we're, we are developing, all are really targeted at transitioning our support, not just to going in and working with the teacher, but to thinking, to really focus on um, that context that that teacher is working in every day. I also love, I and mean, before I go through some of the infrastructure and supports we're talking about, I wanted to also talk about the family child care systems that we have here. Um, we talk a lot about our center-based capacity. As you know, this initiative is also targeted to, to family child care. Um, I have walked into a situ situation where there are systems in place that are designed to help build the capacity of family child care homes as a professional learning community. Um, the family child care systems really help build that structure around what can be a very isolating place for a family child care provider. Uh, I say all of that because that baseline is what we're building today. We are building those, we have, we have this infrastructure that the, that the state has been building over the last few years and we are now ready to launch into thinking about how do we translate that to what we're investing in and the support that we ask for um, from our partners. Um, so this coordinated system is what this ECSO is built on. Many of you know, um, before I got here, this was, we did an RFP, we stepped back, um, and as I came in, realized that there was a lot of um, work that we could do to bring the community with us in this journey, uh, and that's why we decided to have this event today. So as we look at all of the landscape that we are building, the infrastructure, the puzzle that is early childhood in Massachusetts, really being able to provide some context for you that that will understand what we're trying to achieve with this specific investment in our early childhood support organizations. Uh, so I wanted to talk a little bit about the state's vision for this before I hand it over to Erin to talk a little bit more about um, what New Profit's role is in this. So uh, 
As we know, many of you are familiar with the research on the promising practices emerging across the field that look at how you support leadership capacity in, in doing that job embedded professional development. Many of those projects have been done in pockets and in, um, in, in some what I call sort of a, a protected nature where we've been able to go in and demonstrate results. Um, but scaling is different and is hard. And so what we want to look to do at, with the early childhood support organization work is to figure out how can the state support organizations and partner with organizations who are doing that hard work to build the context that allows us to scale, to build leadership's capacity not only to implement um, a job and friend and professional development when that coach is standing with them every single day, but what happens as we build their capacity to support them um, on their own. Um, where that coach is coming in maybe once a month or we, we pull away and bring on the next cohort of, of programs that need to think about um, going from good to great. And so build that, the design of this is really to think about not just how do we deliver and improve instruction, but how do we build that leadership capacity to create a, con a climate of continuous learning um, at the program level that needs to be driven not just by the teacher's desire to do the best practice and to implement the best curriculum, but, but that leadership's understanding of how to enhance and to support the best practices in that classroom or in that family child care home. Uh, that, so that will be the goal of this. We look to um, really think about how that connects with uh, the implementation of, of curriculum, how we, we uh, use, uh, how we assess uh, instruction, um, and really how are we how are we demonstrating that we not only can do this in one or two programs at a time, but we can actually transform the early childhood landscape in Massachusetts to be a leadership-driven um, culture of continuous quality improvement in every single center and family child care home. <laughs> Uh, so it is, it, we have done this through a partnership with New Profit. I think the public-private partnership that has been established long before I got here uh, has been, is a, a hallmark of how we actually can make this work. There are things that the state can support over the long term that make it very difficult to think about how do you start up? How do you do research? How do you tell if this is working and how do you look at scaling? And so the public-private partnership that we brought to, um, to this work is providing us with an ability to really think not only only about what does the state need to do on an ongoing basis to make sure that this work can be done and be transformative, but also what do we need to learn in the initial stages that will make sure that this is sustainable and ongoing and has the ability to be a model for the country of how we transform uh, the, what we know and to what we do every single day. Um, so I am excited to learn more. I know we have lots of robust conversation today. Um, I will happy to, to continue to, to have conversation. I wanted to talk, turn over to Aaron and have him be able to talk from the, the private partnership perspective of what he's excited about here.